Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that week break, talk about all the things going on in the world of open source, and just Linux in general. That uh, confused, young-looking gentleman is Pedro Mateus. He makes funny faces. Hello. That's it. That's all he does. <laughs> he, is, he is strictly here to make funny faces throughout this episode. And that is Jill Bryant, and we will all be watching her microphone with eagle eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a bit of a pool going to see what it drops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, something, something everyone who does podcasting will eventually experience, yes. especially when you're live streaming. How's everybody doing? Uh, we got a chunky show for you this week. Um, playing a little bit of catch up. You, if you follow me on the social medias or if you're in our Discord, you'd know I picked up a new Microtech device, which is always... Um, all right. It's always an adventure. It's Microtech. You learn these things. And I picked up one of the um, CAP-AC access points, which you, you know you're in for trouble when you're like, why is this, why is this thing quad-core? That, that's ridiculous <laughs> for an access point. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said on the Saturday show, just to summarize, uh, Microtech is impervious to um, like intuition. You, you're not going to defeat it. I spent... <laughs> Over an hour going, I got this. I'll figure this out. Mm. Regular home networking equipment, I can do it. No problem. You know, I have that level. This, this is next level stuff. And especially it's like with the diff- Microtech multiplier on it. Some people know what I'm talking about. They have their own way of doing things. <laughs> but once I get this certificate and the config and everything set up in the router and I pushed it out to the access point to where it could configure itself, after I figured out how to get the access point to boot in cap AC mode, that was another one. Um, it's working. I still don't, uh, we were talking in the pre-show, I don't trust power over Ethernet, but it appears to not be on fire. And so that's really all I'm looking for, man. Mm-hmm. Again, 45 Very watts. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to, man. Nothing terribly. I directed traffic yesterday. Thank you, Athens uh, Denizens, for not running me over. That was interesting for the red light four-way being down, but not the first time I've done that. What's new with you, Jill? Aw, well, I had I've had fun last week at at um, listening to the Ohio Linux Fest. Um, some of the really good talks, and uh, just finished one by Mad Dog this morning. And that was really, really cool. And I think the three of us all got to enjoy some of that convention. So that was awesome. And also the Linux App Summit starts tomorrow. So I have signed up. It's free also. So you can go and enjoy some of those talks. Those will be really, really interesting. How are they going to do the talks? Because I really wanted to watch the um, one that was eventually posted from, uh, who was it? Calabra did it? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they had their talks like two weeks ago, and I went to watch one live. It's like, create your Collabora account. One, oh, okay. Yeah. Now register for this, then submit to <laughs> this, right. then do this yeah. and this. And this. I'm like, I just wanted to watch. No. <laughs> do you have a YouTube channel? Go, right. Yeah. Can I go there and watch? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, okay, honestly, Collabora, I was thinking, well, you know, maybe because, you know, sometimes like, we don't want to use YouTube. They're evil. I'm like, I get it. I get it. Um, then they put it on their YouTube channel. I'm like, really? Come on. <laughs> How about you, P Money? Uh, not much. It's this week has. Um, I guess it's the pre-holiday uh, season that uh, there's actually a lot more people having issues and a lot more people um coming back from summer vacation and actually starting to do some proper work before you know christmas rolls around and that stops again can't come fast enough as far as i'm concerned but uh yeah no that still no news on the pie boy dmg because i did email uh experimental pie it's like okay i emailed the store they said that they talked to you guys what's up it's delayed like the screens are delayed uh some of the uh daughter boards have some very custom components that there's been a bit of a delay on that, so we're sending stuff out as quickly as we can. Not quickly enough. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you'll get it in time for Festivus. Probably not. Unlike yeah, could be. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I did see that, man. Just on a bit of a sign jack. I saw that um, B&H is, or it might have been out of route. No, it was B&H that was sending out emails to people who like pre-ordered the uh, new Ryzen CPUs. And like, yeah, those aren't coming in until like February. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
man. <laughs> the Ryzen CPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, and supposedly AMD uh, GPUs as they come out this month. Uh -huh. mm. Yes. <laughs> well, if we're be celebrating Festivus, we might as well celebrate another birthday. And that's for Kate. Yay! Yes, it's 20 years old. One more wow. and it can actually <laughs> drink in the U.S. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's Kate. It's been around for 20 years. Well, not 20 years yet. Apparently, uh, the official 20-year mark is on December 14th because that that's when the first email that the creator um christoph uh christoph coleman that's the first email that he sent out it's like look I'm working on uh an mdi variant for k right and i want to make this its own thing anyone want to help me and well no one replied to him uh so uh he originally had emailed the uh k right the original k right developer but apparently that email address was no longer in use. So then he emailed the uh, KD Devel um, mailing list. And eventually people started joining and he actually got things and he went through uh, several uh, name variants. Uh, one of them was Kant, K-A-N-T, which has the other pronunciation, which is why they decided to change it. Uh, so Kate uh, is mm -hmm. uh, what it became. And it is, in my opinion the best uh text editor to have just for regular everyday use and uh it's the first thing or one of the first things i install um in kde systems because it does make use have heavy use of the uh, kde frameworks so it does integrate with just about everything else kde if you set it up all right and it's only four letters. If I need to edit something, it's just <laughs> Kate, name of the file, instead of having to type six letters for k right. Yeah, no, yeah. four letters. <laughs> hey, one of the things I'm more curious about, Chips brings up, who are these responsible people who have emails from 20 years ago? Uh, Christoph is one of them, apparently. Uh, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like Pedro, I've been using Kate for years, and it's been one of my go-to editors, because back in the early days, early 2000s, you know, I was I was using KDE a lot, a lot and I um, wrote some web pages on it. <laughs> so it's it's been one of my go-to editors, too, and I'm so happy. It's still around and still getting good development. Awesome. Yes. I was using Netscape. What was it? Com what was the HTML? Communicator. Thing? Was it communi Was it the communicator for the HTML editor? Yeah. In Netscape. Yeah. <laughs> I remember using that too. <laughs> that. Um, I've always uh, liked Kate simply because it had, um, even way back when, you could open a terminal. I'm like, oh, that's handy. And mm -hmm. Always been a bit fancy for my taste. I, I'm a G edit person these days. I'm like, I, I get it done. Yeah, as they say. you get it. <laughs> it's either Kate or a uh, genie for me. Uh, but yeah, the if I don't want to have the uh, the whole kitchen sink installed, it, it's usually genie. And but if I'm just yeah, editing Kate. something, it's going to be nano. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No quick text edits. Nano. <laughs> we we need to send um um a um, ticket to Nano and say, hey, so when are you getting support for GTK three? Like you know, again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is really, really awesome. So uh, GIMP 2.99.2 and stable build is now ready for testing. And it's it's the, the first towards the long anticipated GIMP 3 release due sometime in 2021. So th there, this was a, actually a huge release. And um, the big news here is that it's based on GTK3 rather than the GTK2 UI toolkit, which the current stable build of GIMP uses. And so because of GTK3, it has native support for Wayland, and it now supports high DPI displays natively, which follows your system-wide high DPI scale settings. Way to go, GIMP. <laughs> and there is now one of my favorite things, there is multi-layer selection support now, as well as the ability to interact with and apply changes on the multi-layer selection. So that's a big deal. We've been waiting for that functionality for a long time. And there's, there's just that, so much. Yeah, I was kind of <laughs> Pedro, you noticed that you can stick things into the GIMP. 
Yeah, you can actually hot plug stuff, which is a yeah. big one because I do uh, <laughs> <laughs> decided I decided to share my life with uh, with an artist. So um, she's already been captured by uh, Photoshop it's land, but so I tried. Glad, so glad it's not Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's um, one of her uh, of Nori's big complaints was that. If she plugged in her drawing tablet to while GIMP was already running, it just didn't see it. It it wouldn't work. And worse, if she was working and she happened to knock out the uh, the USB uh, connection while it was already working, GIMP would get a little bit crashy, just a little bit, as in it almost immediately crashed. So that was a big no go. They finally, apparently, that was the fault of the uh, GTK two. Um, mm -hmm. implementation. Uh, they did fix some of the crashiness if you accidentally unplugged it, but even if you plugged it back in, you weren't getting any input, so you had to save, close GIMP, make sure that it was working, <laughs> and then start GIMP again. So yeah, yeah. hot plugging. 2020, <laughs> finally. <good>. This <laughs> is in Wayland support. By the time Wayland's ready, 10 years from now, um, <laughs> everything's going to be waiting on it, and that makes me very happy to see that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> New GIMP extensions, Jill. What the yeah. Gex format? Yeah, the dot .gex format, which makes it, it just makes it so much easier for developers and artists and, and just GIMP users in general to, in, to install brushes and splash screens and patterns and dynamics and plugins. So they, they've totally revamped the whole extension, um, uh, extension toolkit. So really cool. Right on. Good news all around. Well, mm -hmm. can we, is, are, are we showing our age when we make the dude you're getting, do the kids even understand, dude, you're getting Adele? <laughs> you're, you're getting Adele. <laughs> did, did that even, they don't. Is that on a, any <laughs> meme radar for anyone under the age of like 35? Possibly uh, not. Yeah. In that yeah, case, get so. off my yeah. lawn and get your dough. <laughs> um, Dell's adding webcam and microphone kill switches to the latest kernel. Well, there's a patch that's been submitted. And hey, welcome to this brave new world where we're all at home. We're doing these things. This is going to be kernel level. It's going to be a kill switch for audio and video. Um, it's going to have support Finally. for hotkeys, which is yes. kind of brilliant. <laughs> now, there's no timeline for this since it's under development, but this will only be available for new Dells shipping in 2021, to which I didn't have time to run and grab a roll of tape. Is really all I can say. <laughs> <of> this. Um, <laughs> this article is from Wired Gorilla. They do bring up a um, good point. Um, is it the Lenovo's? Who's shipping? And it's not Lenovo with the um, hardware kill switch on their laptops for the camera. The Libra? Uh, Dell has that on their uh, current lineup of uh, Latitude Libra business notebooks laptops. Currently um, have that enabled, but in newer Dell, this uh, that's a good idea. It's uh, I think they're going to target control. F4. To like yeah. just Librem and Pine. Hmm. The the Pine book has uh, firmware switches on the keyboard to shut down the camera, microphone, and Bluetooth Wi-Fi. So yeah, and Dell whether or not the, the first... system is up and running. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice to have that hardware switch. And Dell was yep. one of the first to have get the fingerprint reader working on Linux. So that was really I awesome. Still too, need to Ubuntu. use GNOME to use that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> no. I don't know, no, um, no maplet. If that's your thing, you know, you don't want to accidentally have your camera and audio. <laughs> Even if you're not paranoid, you just don't want that functionality on. So that's good. You can do what I do in here, like get another camera and, and like none of this can cut on without five minutes of intervention. So I... <laughs> <laughs> the most secure difficulty. Pretty much. <laughs> right. It's like you you have to be on premise, you know. Do you have physical access that you can cut on? So you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to be delightfully sneaky if you're gonna cut my camera on without me noticing. <laughs> also possibly a ghost. However you need to roll, baby. What's WinApps and why should I care about it? WinApps is um in my opinion a little bit excessive, but hey, if you gotta get your uh, Microsoft Office uh, stuff done and it needs to be Microsoft Office. 
Well, uh, you can set up a KVM running Windows, install Microsoft Office on it, and then use WinApps to basically set up a one-time single window uh, RDP connection to that VM running Windows. That just shows you the uh, the Office app, and it integrates uh, everything like MIME types and everything else into GNOME. Right now, it's only working for Nautilus. They do say that KDE might be a thing in the future but right now it's for nautilus and yeah it sets up mime types it lets you have the application as though it were native despite working over an rdp connection and if you've worked over rdp connections you know that that native claim is a bit of a stretch but it's workable uh so yeah no that's uh that's quite a few steps but if you need the native office uh, applications or adobe applications uh then yes i suppose i can run powershell <laughs> <You could. laughs> how delightful there's already powershell on linux <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a snap for it <laughs> well i think this is actually really huge because it, it makes it so much easier to use like a microsoft outlook um the standalone app which a lot of you know companies, a lot of enterprise companies are still using. They're not u all using Office 365 yet. So all the apps that you can use with this, it, it's it's amazing and it's not hard to install. So this is uh, it's huge. Uh, yes, Noctilus. It would be faster mm -hmm. with an emulation layer, but <laughs> this is all <laughs> RDP to a VM is uh, <laughs> easier. <laughs> Here's one of the things. Um, wasn't um, Canonical working on something like a seamless uh, integration layer a while back? I remember. I think it. this was that, or something close to this, I because I remember us talking about like, it. Um, yeah. <laughs> the original post I saw on this, uh, the creator of that was like, I was just, I just get tired of waiting on it. So. Right. Okay. Th this is my solution. Oh, this. For it. Uh, yeah. Barnes. Uh, so, yeah. Good on that. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Uh, my favorite thing uh, I like to see on Twitter um, or just anywhere on social media is Linux is rubbish for multimedia production, to which um, <laughs> you, 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 have, you, you have a defensible argument in audio. You do, as much as it irritates me to admit that. On video, you <laughs> don't really. Because there's been DaVinci results. We're talking pro-level stuff here. We're not talking like, hey, mm -hmm. man, you want to do your cat video. That's fine, man. There's great <laughs> tools. But DaVinci Resolve 17 is out. It's a beta. And it's available for Linux day one. As with all things, a bunch of new stuff, uh, updates for the color grading. Um, there's been Fusion updates. They've completely reworked, allegedly, their um, audio engine. So if you're playing with Fairlight, which is their audio section inside of DaVinci Resolve that supposedly works better, allegedly. I don't know. I try to avoid that at all costs, but best part is completely free to play around with, and uh, the studio version is still like 300 bucks, which is incredibly well-priced when you start talking about an NLE compared to the competition. I watched the live stream. There's a bunch of stuff to play around with. If you're looking for it now, the main reason, um, there's the cut page. Sometimes I accidentally click on that button. That's all <laughs> I know about the cut page. Um, you got a bunch of stuff that you can play around with. I enjoy it. I use it. The main reason I use DaVinci Resolve here is because it's the difference between like 12 minutes to render out um, weekly, daily, Wednesdays, or one and a half to two hours because it's taking advantage. You've heard me harp on it. It's uh, leveraging compute be it OpenCL GP, or CUDA, GPU. right? <laughs> and it's a night and day difference. And that's just the rendering, the speed and functionality and stuff I can get away with on the timeline. Whole other game as well. Um, still like a lot of love for KDN Live, OpenShot, and Blender because someone's like, Blender has mm -hmm. a video editor. I'm like, well, you're <laughs> yes, the person that uses it. Well, it's even better. It's like, do you use it? Oh, no, but, but it has one. <laughs> <laughs> so does Emacs. Yeah. Let's this not. Yeah. Um, they had one announcement I just wanted to give everyone a mention of. They have a speed editor. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. It's a new piece of hardware. As I'm, <laughs> you're not doing a good job selling it to me, DaVinci, because I'm looking on your page and I'm not seeing it. It's a little, <laughs> little tiny. Come on, there's your color. There it is. Hey, I found it. This little guy mm -hmm. for $295. And I'm like, that uh, shocked me because black magic stuff. I'm like, that's wickedly underpriced. 
but it's free if you buy a copy of uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio. So for $2.95, they're just going to toss that in. Might be something to keep in mind if you're looking for like some desktop stuff. I'm cheap. I use, I use a trackball. And, uh, okay, so the <laughs> that the actual license is two ninety five, and you just get that for free. You just get that for free. Okay, that yeah. that okay. Isn't that, that awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if some, somebody wants to like buy that for me, I'll give you a copy of the Future Result. <laughs> I don't think I'm necessarily going to buy. I want that keyboard, but there is no world where I'm spending a thousand dollars on that keyboard, man. Also, it doesn't even have mechanical switches. What made me laugh out loud, Pedro? What made me laugh out loud? I was watching the live stream, and oh, over here, you can't really see it. I have a control surface to control the audio stuff, right? And they're like, hey, we have our own control surface now for Fairlight. And it's got motorized faders. I'm like, that's cute. Got those. It's got LCD screen stitching. Yep, got that. And I, I'm looking at it. And my entire time, I'm thinking, you're probably going to try to charge $1,000 for that, too, knowing you. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Nine ninety five. <laughs> Three grand. <laughs> my... Audible <laughs> laughter for me walking around my house when I heard the price announced. It's like, guys, that you have yeah. to get yourself. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the day, I paid five hundred dollars for an editing dial. So oh, yeah. <laughs> that's just a dial. How about some keycaps? Five hundred dollars yeah. for new keycaps for yeah, your existing that. thirty thousand dollar <laughs> layout. Um, which in comparison, but. Mm -hmm. One good thing with the introduction of um, 17 is there's a software development kit for encoders. So developers will have the option to make, um, make plugins to allow different types of media to be encoded and decoded by DaVinci Resolve. So that's not out of the realm of possibility. Somebody would be like, hey, man, I'm just going to make this encoder decoder work with FFmpeg and do that. Now you can use all your MP4s and stuff like that in the free version. That is a technical possibility, but mm -hmm. real quick, if mm -hmm. you want to get installed, as is tradition with any version, major version update of DaVinci Resolve, LinuxGameCast.com, <laughs> I've made a guide on how to get that critter set up yeah, on your Debian's yeah. <laughs> and your Ubuntu's. This also worked with Pop, Mint, stuff like that with the optional, hey, this is how you install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, uh, make the dev package and install it after a reboot. If you do the drivers, so that'll get you up and running with a quickness. I look forward to the unrelated YouTube questions and comments on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I load my MP4s? <laughs> the, my favorite one is how come it doesn't work in my MD laptop? I'm like, mm, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it should at least launch. <laughs> Did you uh, did you happen to see the post I made in our Discord? I think yesterday from OBS where I was helping a guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Never assume. <laughs> Never assume. Uh, be patient with me because when I troubleshoot your issues, I will insult your intelligence for good reason. Case in point. Yeah. That post. <laughs> it's not condescending if you haven't actually done everything <laughs> yeah it, it was a fact of like hey install debian multimedia that's what i said i said you need to install the deb multimedia repo that he's like no it doesn't work yeah rah, 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 rah. i'm like um okay not my problem but here let me see um did you add contrib to it you know because you got to do that in debian add contrib and non-free non-free is not supported on debian multimedia repo but he's like what I'm like the media Deb multimedia repo that I told you to just install. He's like, oh, that's a repo? <laughs> I just yeah, I looked online for the package and I saw that it was available. Okay. Uh, <laughs> again, don't get angry if I accidentally insult. Well, I'm perfect, purposely insult your intelligence. So. But we got his problem solved and he was able to OBS without issue. Now, Mavis Beacon going to sue somebody, Pedro. I believe. Yeah, no, not quite. <laughs> quite possibly, but uh, this one is, uh, well, it's ML type. It is a typing uh, trainer targeted at programmers. Basically, uh, it's surprisingly more. Um, 
it's surprisingly more than I would have originally thought. It's like, okay, so it's just a command line uh, typing trainer that gives you a little bit of text highlighting and tells you like your words per minute and everything else. No, 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 no. See, um, main features, it's like text generation for the thing that you need to type out. Using neural networks to generate text, one can use pre-trained uh, networks, see below, or train new ones from scratch. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not a programmer I had my programming classes in university I've done some programming uh, on the side but I don't like it it's not my thing so clearly not the um, not the intended audience for this one but neural network uh, typing trainer Pedro it's pre-trained on Rust the kids will love it <laughs> it's pre-trained on a bunch of different languages too that's that's insane. I don't know. Man. It's very good, it. but insane. What I need, I don't need typing training anymore. What I need is Google Docs level autocorrect for my virtual terminals because Google, <laughs> you have crippled my ability to spell, type, and grammar good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, it's got a bunch of pre trained models. I like that. It should help in those rare situations. Oh, those ever so rare situations. Where you're unable to like copy and paste from Stack Overflow, mm -hmm. where you have to like look and type, you know, if if all you have is your mobile and you're on a terminal, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to key this in. Unless you have KD Connect, then you can share the clipboards between the phone and in a terminal. In a terminal, <laughs> you have KD Connect for terminal. The headless uh, box. If you had, uh, yeah, if you had to boot into hey, Pedro, run level Pedro, three, I, I, you're Pedro, already. I'm sorry, uh, I've already typed it out. And what's your solution? <laughs> but if you're just going to a TTY, yes, it still sees the clipboard. So yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, for, mm, never mind. Different argument. <laughs> um, if you want to get it installed, I believe it is uh, okay. Of course, Docker. Hmm? Yeah, and or it, Pip. Well, <laughs> hey, man, I'm sorry, Machete, don't pip. <laughs> Look, Aww, if like my it. choices are <laughs> Docker, Snaps, or pip, I'll take pip any day of the week. <laughs> I will reluctantly pip something, but and pip's gotten better. <laughs> pip's gotten better at removing stuff. Pip's but. got real good at just getting mm -hmm. rid of a lot of the crap. So, yeah, no, pip. Pip's good. <laughs> <laughs> Something people tend to have issues with, um, and I harp on them because I <laughs> just, it, 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 bugs, it doesn't bug me. It bugs me that people complain about something that they're obviously, it's like, quit hitting yourself. No, man, my knee hurts. Um, is running out of system resources and memory and blaming the browser. You know, blaming Chrome, blaming Firefox. Like, how many times you get open? Poof, smoke bomb, they disappear. I'm like, I'm, I need, we don't need to bring that into this conversation, but we, we, we need to hear me complain. Well, just maybe this Chrome extension, which is open source, might be able to help you out because it is, in fact, a Chrome extension for suspending all tabs to free up memory, man. I know this is going to need It's called the Great Suspender, not to be confused with any, you know, moderate suspender. With, with suspenders. suspenders. <laughs> now, you have the option to whitelist specific URLs, domains, anything you want to suspend, um, configurable behavior for browsing. It's got online or offline battery power mode, um, power key selection for, you know, messing around with the config dialogues, customizing the actions, all that. It detects tabs that are playing audio. It'll stop them from being suspended. And, uh, yeah, NPM. Yay. It just, the hits keep on coming. I'll tell you. You know what? This is available in the Chrome <laughs> App Store. So keep that in mind. My solution to this is <sighs> close some delete expletive tabs and use your bookmarks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the bookmark I mean, bar. It's actually really useful. <laughs> yeah. I use the bookmark bar all the time and it's actually sad that we need a tool like this but i'm happy there is is one because there are so many people who have you know 20 40 more tabs open i don't do that many i don't like having that many tabs open i think what but... it boils down to jill is this most people unknowingly run chrome os uh their, yeah their computer that. Is, what does your computer do it launches the browser 
Yeah. <laughs> it launches Chrome. Yeah. I say. That's it's just their navig- system navigation up at the top. <laughs> okay. Um, this one's all yours, though. Yeah, so just six months after the release of LXQT 0.15, we now have LXQT 0.16, and it has lots of improvements and bug fixes, including three new themes, Clearlux, Cavantum, and Leech, and Pulse Audio Volume Control bug fixes, improvements to Library FM, QT and PC Man FM QT file managers, and just there. Oh gosh, lots of uh, power management improvements. And this version also the um, LX Image QT now supports resizing images as well, supporting more image types, which is really great. There's actually a lot of changes in this uh, release, and I'm so happy to see all this wonderful prog- progress. I love LX QT. It's, you know, a, ni- a nice lightweight desktop you can use as an alternative to XFCE or KDE. So it definitely seems like a great idea. LXQT, I showed a lot more love in a world where XFCE didn't mm-hmm. exist. However, it does. <laughs> um, outside of curiosity, like I've loaded LXQT up um, over the years. I've even tried it like on these boxes back here when I was figuring out just how tight I could get things. And um, I have nothing against it. I'm glad, I'm glad that it's being updated pedro do you even know what it is i do <laughs> it was it came around as an effort to try and move away from lxde uh, that was like the lightweight um desktop environment that actually was mm-hmm. a full desktop environment rather than just a window manager and it's like okay we need something more modern something that isn't lxde basically and LXQT came around. And my biggest gripe with LXQT from the get-go is how much stuff you just couldn't do. It's like entire bits of mm-hmm. configuration that I, LXD had that were not present. You know, it's the KD uh, and GNOME principle of new releases. It's like, we released a new version. Yeah, that um, all the, that level of uh, functionality that you were used to, haha, <laughs> screw you. Not anymore. Uh, Yay. <laughs> like, to my point, they, they even bring up like the default applications in LXQT config. It now actually lets you select the default web browser, file manager, and email client instead of just giving you the MIME types, all of the MIME types, and you having to set an application per MIME type. Yeah, that was annoying. <laughs> 2020. <Yeah. laughs> Enough of your typing MIMES. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to support our typing mimes, you can do that by becoming a patron, kicking some coin. You find some value in what we do, and you appreciate it. And like, hey, man, keep on doing this. This is the way we finance our nonsense. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come get some cool rewards, up to and including access to our Discord, an extra bonus show that we do each and every week. And um, I don't know. What else, Pedro? Do you, do you have anything special for the people this week? Uh, let's see. I was just uh, reminding Mir in chat to refresh the page because he pointed out that we forgot to change the uh, <laughs> the Twitch uh, title, title at the beginning, <laughs> which, yes, we did. We absolutely <laughs> did. But uh, that's been changed twice, I think. This so You could, uh, <laughs> we'll help <laughs> Pedro. Well, you did a good job. You did a good first stab at um, updating the Twitch title. I, I refreshed That it. was like as quickly as I could. It's like, LWDW Linux News. Done. Go. <laughs> thank you, sir. And thank you, sirs and madams and everyone else um, supporting us at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get your name in the credits. Stick around for those. Um, we have shirts and stuff like that. If you want to put LGC all over your typing mimes, there it is. Yes. Stored at LinuxGamecast.com. <laughs> People buy them. I got stickers back there. You can cover up naughty words with slightly less naughty ones. And. Um, <laughs> Yeah. You can get LWW shirts. We have those. And yeah, yeah. We <laughs> yes, have Frank's. We do. Frank's back here. <laughs> Chill out. And you see Frank. Frank's always an international man of business, but that's enough. Shameless shilling and self promotion. Let's get into mm-hmm. Slice Pie. Ooh, celebrate Pie Day. It's not March 14th, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm really, really excited about this. This is a uh, Risk OS 5.28 is now available, and it's just it's so nice to seeing to seeing the updates to this OS. And um, I, for one, and you know, just so happy to be able to to geek out with Risk OS and run the vintage ARM based Acorn software on my Raspberry Pi, and they also support the beagle boards and panda boards now so it's it's really really cool and one of the things Max i 86. was <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> well in emulation <laughs> yes. what about my um, new ibook <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> but yeah i i've always been a fan of risco risco esque and um, I don't have an Acorn machine yet. I do plan to get one at some time for my vintage computer collection. But it's still just a really fast Zippy OS. And there have actually been updates and improvements to uh, Bang Paint. <laughs> Bang Paint. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be careful saying that. <laughs> so Bang Paint, which it, which when it came out was actually way ahead of its time. And they've done a lot of improvements like added um, alpha channel support and more sprite support. So it was a really good uh, paint program way back in the day. And it's nice to see that being updated as well. That's fantastic, um, man. That's available. You can go ahead and play with it. <laughs> you, you too can experience with love and joy the bad old days of computing. Oh, mm -hmm. no. It's Although wonderful. I do have an issue. I do have an issue with this particular uh, article. Are you trying to imply that you're risk adverse? <laughs> no, 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 no. Quite the opposite. I, I do uh, very much want all of the architectures to succeed and the operating systems to go along with them. My issue is with that picture that they used in the article. Uh, you're going to be making a <laughs> Where? Look. <this? laughs> it's food. <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about risk OS. What? <laughs> that that I guess, is a I risk guess it's... to your health, you monster. <laughs> They're talking about our um, community-led bounty. So <laughs> I guess I'm getting type two diabetes to just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the slice of M dot pie is not going to help things, Pedro. No, no, no. But I guess we do uh, need to um, address it, at least. If you have one of the old Argon 1 cases, you know, the ones before the M.2 enabled one came out, that didn't have uh, the bottom tray Wait that a had you the trying little to tiny little PCB. CD. Yep. Okay. <laughs> you can. You absolutely can. If you bought the uh, original version, now you can, uh, instead of having to buy the new version just to get the uh, <laughs> extra bottom tray, uh, you can pay an extra 20 bucks, and you get that bottom tray that bolts onto your existing um, Argon 1, and you can have your M.2's uh, NVMe SATAs, and it goes for the exact uh, it uses the exact same USB pass through work outside the case which <laughs> it is uh, there's got to be something else guys it's come on yeah, that's that, yeah a little janky huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just a USB pass through <laughs> it's a thing i was very excited about it uh when i saw that I'm like oh m dot anything m dot 2 especially like add on for the pie right up into the boy and rise oh, usb 3 that's cute <laughs> Threw in the fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Um, I guess that, that's it. doing it good, though. I mean, 20 bucks. It is. A, yeah, it's a yeah. really good price. You know, if you want it like nice and contained, too, even USB 3 speed, hey, you want to boot off that and you don't want like a spinning drive and you don't want an SSD with SATA ports, you're nice and neat, clipped in there, doom. And, you know, you can just advert your gaze, advert um, <laughs> from the horrifying mangled two USB prompt <laughs> thing that's going to be. Plugged into the back that you're not going to see anyway, but Pedro will still have nightmares about it. Uh, technically plugged into the front because you want to have access to the I.O. Not so. if I close my eyes. <laughs> oh, the back of your eyelids. My bad. Sorry. Nothing, I misunderstood. Nothing a blindfold can fix. <laughs> if you'd like to tell us about um, your preferred method of fixing it, at fixing blindfolds, your head? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Willful self ignorance? <laughs> way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, the best way to actually get in touch with us is you go to linuxgamecast.com. 
there's a contact button with a contact form hidden under it. It's like, hidden. how did you do that? I don't know. Uh, but yes, uh, that's the best way to get in touch. Make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, we might mistake it as a little bit of hate mail for the foul-mouthed Saturday show, what we do. <laughs> And yeah, it's that's the best way. You can also leave YouTube comments, Patreon comments, of course, take those take priority. Order, order of the like chances of them getting read 100% on Patreon, 100%, yep. like 99.99% if they're a contact forum. And um, YouTube, YouTube's going to be a bit of thing with YouTube. <laughs> awesome. You get to keep in mind people are leaving comments on things for 10 years worth of videos, it might get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite thing is mm-hmm. when somebody does write into the show, when they write into uh-huh. the show, you can always tell because even if they don't regularly watch it during the day, they just show up. You're like, huh. right there. There he is. <laughs> uh, we have uh, an M Fox dog who did actually submit a bit of uh, feedback because, well, according to what he said, thank you for covering uh, Sci Five's uh, unmatched board. It's the uh, Mini mm-hmm. ITX one we talked about. Just a few points the board has outputs that most Mini ITX boards don't have GPIO, JTAG debugging, points to monitor power usage uh, for each aspect. Great for working out the power hundred bits uh all aspects will be free and open uh keep libra boot happy one more thing you do need to develop a uh you do not need to develop a tool chain sorry my bad um everything is already in existence uh and the big five linuxes all have a uh, risk v or risk five however you want to say it builds and all of them can run on this board like intel uh, or amd code written for one chip will work on any other cheers that's great. The only uh, thing that I raised last week was the price, uh, specifically the six hundred and sixty-five dollar price tag. That's much cheaper than any other uh, Risk V board before it. But no, that's still for me. That's too expensive. I'm sure for Foxy and other people who very much like this architecture and want to see where Are it's going to go kidding? in the future. Do, do, do how much they're going to charge in Australia for that? It's probably twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars at least. <laughs> Make up a number. It, it's a brilliant piece of kit. I think we all agreed on that. And um, yeah, definitely six hundred bucks mm-hmm. for what this is targeted at um, is reasonable. It's not for, but it's not a tinker board. It's not an enthusiast and hobbyist board. Clearly, no. yeah, <laughs> development <laughs> board. It's something if you're getting ready to make some products on. You're going to get a exactly. You're going to get a pared down version of this and whatever product they ship with it. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's been it for this week's weekly daily Wednesday. We got to roll out of here, mm-hmm. hit some music, and play some credits. Yay! That music <laughs> sure sounds like it's been hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, oh, Steve husband says, huzzah! <laughs> huzzah! And uh, Chibsy, no, I'm not. I, I, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I want a great deal of many Executive things that are producers. currently coming out, but n- n- that's not one of them. No, no, no. <laughs> the <Death> flutes! <laughs> <laughs> They all eat potato chips, even the chairlings. Yes. Beautiful party patrons. <laughs> Yay, LWW 248. Can you believe it? Yeah, I've been here for all of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 